Hey guys, Vince here from Internet Dragons TV, and I'm here to take a look at Torchlight 2, and specifically the Berserker class. Now, first of all, big shout outs to our friends over at Runic Games. Got us a couple of uh, pre release codes for the game, and I've been playing it, absolutely loving it. Uh, by the time you guys see this video, of course, the game will have come out, and you'll have experienced this awesomeness for yourself. But I can without a doubt say that Torchlight 2 is. Probably one of the best games I've played so far this year, but we're not here for a review. We're here to take a look at the awesomeness that is the Berserker. Yes, rocking the Mohawk. Berserker is a close-range melee class that really focuses on quick-hitting attacks. As with any class in Torchlight, the Berserker can wield any variation of weapons, but I chose to go a little old school and dual-wield some claw weapons. Now, the thing about claw weapons, as you can see here by this uh, tooltip, is that they do not hit more than one enemy at a time. They don't have any cleave, they don't have any splash damage, no AoE. So that is a big negative when you're coming up against the hordes. But to balance that out, they do ignore a lot of armor. And it just really works into how I've built my character, which you'll see coming up. So what we're going to do here, I'm just going to take a quick run through a, a side quest here, so you guys don't have to worry about any story spoilers, and you just kind of get a feel for how I've played my particular version of the Berserker. Uh, real quick, we'll take a look at the character stats. I'm currently level 25, near the beginning of Act 2, and I have a good, pretty good balance of strength and dexterity, putting points into focus and vitality as I feel necessary. And then if we look at our skill trees, Berserker, like every class, has three skill trees. The first of which is the Hunter Tree. Hunter Tree is just basically built around becoming a wrecking machine in melee. Lots of uh, buffs to your skills, bleed attacks, uh, war cries, a lot of really fun effects going on here. Then you have the Tundra skills, which allows you to play your Berserker as more of a caster. A lot of ice and shock damage going on here. Uh, you have AoE abilities, you have ranged attacks, lots of really cool stuff in the Tundra Tree. But for me, I went with the Shadow Tree. First of all, because I'm choosing to play the game on Veteran, I wanted a tree that had a bit more sustainability to it. Some self-healing, a lot of that good stuff. And I'm really focusing on using two skills right now. The first one is Shadow Burst. You transform into a Spectral Wolf and lunge through your enemies, damaging them even as you heal your own body. So basically, if we look here at the skill real quick... Very fun attack. And every time I go through an enemy, I will heal myself for currently 8.5% of my health, and that's up to 3 targets. So I'm gaining over 25% of my health every time I use that attack very, very handy for survivability. I don't really use that many potions, which is good, because these monsters do not play around on Veteran. Uh, it's nice to see they scaled up the difficulty for the first Torchlight. And it's also a great escape ability, getting out of bad situations, or even getting two caster or ranged mobs. And the latest skill I've been using, which I absolutely love, is Savage Rush. The Shadow Wolf spirit overtakes you. While the skill remains active, you dash continuously through foes, leaving them bleeding in your wake. So for this skill, you actually have to continuously hold down the button you have it assigned to, because if you just tap it, it looks pretty much like the Shadow Burst. But if you hold it down, you turn into this wolf and just run around the battlefield. And every enemy you attack, it gains uh, certain debuffs to it. Uh, currently, it only does a small amount of damage on its own. But it increases my movement speed, reduces the armor for my enemies, which is a big thing I'm building around, and puts a pretty significant dot on the enemies. And as I level this up, it'll continue to uh, decrease the armor bonuses to a pretty significant amount. So what I like to do is when I'm faced with a large group of enemies, is I'll use the Savage Rush, apply the dot and debuffs to all of them, real quick Shadow Burst out of the way, and then go to work, and it's been working out quite well for me so far. And personally, looking at the tree, I can't wait until I get into the 40s and unlock Wolfpack, because honestly, who doesn't like walking around with a big army of wolves at their backs? And the passives for each tree uh, are really fun too. I actually want to put passive points into both the Hunter and the Shadow trees, but for now, I'm just kind of sticking to Shadow because, again, it really focuses on what I'm building my character around. The first passive is Frenzy Mastery. It increases the duration of your Frenzy. And that's what we see here with the Charge Bar. Uh, every class has its own variation of the Charge. And for the Berserker, is as you kill enemies, or as you even attack enemies, you don't have to kill them, it'll build up the Charge. Once it's full, you enter a Frenzy State, 
where every attack you do is a crit, and it's great for just shredding bosses or named enemies. Next I have Shred Armor, which, amazing that, it, every time I hit an enemy, it reduces their armor amount. So, between Savage Rush, Shred Armor, and the Claw Passive, armor isn't an issue for me. The, those big enemies the with you know plates and plates of armor might as well not be there. And then the last one here I have that I'm really liking is Red Wolf. Whenever you inflict a critical hit, up to two neighboring enemies may be savaged by a manifestation of your bloodlust. So every time I gain a crit, I'm able to work around the deficiency of the claws of only being able to hit one enemy. And currently, uh, with my dexterity, I have a 13% crit chance, which is nice, but you know it's not really going to proc this very often. But when you think about when you combine Red Wolf with the Frenzy, what I'll do is I'll go around, I'll tag some of the smaller enemies, build up my Frenzy bar, and then I'll go after the boss, and as I'm wailing away on the boss, getting a crit with every single hit, I'll be devastating the enemies around them, and it's worked out fantastically for me so far. So anyway, let's take a quick run through this and uh, just show off some of the gameplay that we have working on here. Uh, for my setup, I have, of course, my main attack on left of the mouse click, I have my shadow burst on right mouse click, and then I have my Savage Rush on 2 with another skill, the Wolf Shade on 1. Wolf Shade is handy, doesn't do a whole lot of damage on its own, but it does heal me uh, as he attacks. So it's something I like to call out against bosses and tougher enemies, or just when I'm getting a bit overwhelmed. Apply the dots, dash through. my health topped off. And look at that, it came out of a battle against some... I don't want to say they're tough enemies, but they weren't pushovers. But I'm at full health. That's handy. And you'll see, uh, as I'm attacking, whenever I get a crit, you'll see these red wolf faces pop up around me. That's the red wolf passive proccing. the Shadow Burst as often as possible to keep my health high. It's really been very helpful. And don't worry about all the stuff I'm passing up, you OCD players like myself. I'm gonna come back through here and really clean it out. I just don't want you guys to see me uh, bursting every urn and picking up every piece of loot for this whole video. Locked. Great. You'll see occasionally an enemy teleporting away, or that acid storm showing up. Those are just some really good glyphs I put on my weapons. Uh, I forget where I got them, but they basically use special skills at random, and eh, I could do without the teleporting one. I wish I'd known what it does before, but uh, I really like the acid rain. It's very helpful. And yes, I do have a nice war beast as a pet. Uh, I started off with a bulldog, but I got a giant fish, which has permanently transformed him. It was a giant war snout. So yes, fishing is good. Despite what uh, some of my partners here at Internet Dragons might say, fish, fish all you can. It will actually really help out your character. And here we go, my frenzy is full. Every attack is a crit. I just wish there were some enemies around to really show it off with. But with all the healing I have from this build, let me summon my wolf. With all the healing I have from this build, I really have to be in trouble in order to have my life threatened. And on the higher difficulty, I'm actually kind of wishing I tried it out on Elite instead of Veteran, because I'm doing pretty well so far. He says as he almost dies. 
Your pet is Your pet is badly I could do without this guy's knockback. Your pet is And just watch all the red wolf procs now. Come on. I don't even really need to worry about the uh, ads when I have my frenzy up. Your pet has So I'll go free this guy. Let me show you what fell off the back of the wagon. And looks like I got a nice uh, vendor for town. That was pretty cool. And quest complete. So yeah, this is a pretty quick one. It was a great opportunity to just show off the Berserker in a combat scenario. As you saw against that boss, I don't want to say he was a tough boss, but he could definitely cause some characters problems between the knockback and the adds. But uh, as a Berserker, it really wasn't that much trouble. Throughout that entire fight, I only used two potions, and I probably only needed one. So with all the self-healing abilities that the Shadow Tree offers to the Berserker, I'm absolutely loving it. So if you liked the video, please give us a like, leave us a comment. Uh, if you'd like to see more, then definitely subscribe to internetdragons.tv or follow us on Twitter at internetdragons.tv. And I'm sure I'll be checking in later on the Berserker once I get some of the more awesome skills to really show off what the class has. Because thus far, at this early point in Torchlight 2, I'm absolutely loving it. So thanks for watching.